week in Copenhagen, uh, we participated in the, uh, the Reclaim Power uh, People's Assembly there. And then uh, more recently in April, there was the, uh, the World People's Conference on uh, climate change and Mother Earth's rights. What we really wanted to do is we wanted to, uh, to bring that horizontal process back to Toronto. And we think the solution to the climate crisis it, it's actually, it's in this room, it's, it's with the people, it's not behind the fences. It's the communities that are going to have to come together on this issue. And so we want to create an event where it's not just people come out and, um, and get talked to. We, we, we've done a lot of events like that. Um, you know, it, it's very valuable like, you know, to come in and have people who have expertise talk to us, but we feel like that it was really important to have an event where we talk to each other, where we have a more organic structure, where we uh, have a horizontal process, where we have breakouts, and we see where the energy of the room wants to go. The only thing that we're going to put out for you guys tonight is our friendly question, and uh, we'll, we'll get to it a bit later. We're going to have uh, a 20 minute discussion, and after that discussion, uh, each group is going to nominate somebody to do a report back so we can all hear uh, what everyone talked about. And then we're all going to come back together as a group, and we're going to, we're going to look at the points that came up, and we're then going to break out into a, a more focused discussion based on what we've already talked about and where we want where we want the discussions to go. This week is sort of like a week of resistance to the GHG20, and between Monday and Thursday, there's been themed days of resistance. And today was the Environmental and Climate Justice Day of resistance. So what we did in the morning is we had a toxic tour of Toronto. Who was there? <laughs> It really brought people from around the world. It was about 30,000 people that came from 140 countries. So if a country like Bolivia, who quote unquote is a third world nation, who is one of the poorest nations in, in the hemisphere, you know, nine, you know, nine million plus people can transform their nation into a better society, I'm positive that in Canada, we can also do the same. So really it's up to you. And I hope that you feel that you can as well. I'm very happy to come to Toronto from, from the embassy, our embassy in Washington and find our Wipala, the indigenous flag, and uh, this uh, Toronto Bolivia solidarity. I'm happy to share with you our wonderful experience uh, in Cochabamba last April at the World People's Conference on Climate Change and the Rights of Mother Earth. That was the idea of my president, Evo Morales. Uh, because he said in, in uh, Copenhagen, he said, 
if the governments we cannot agree on on a solution on to solve this climate change crisis, uh, he really was on the view that only the peoples organized around the world can do something to to save the planet. For example, one of our proposals is to, to have an international global referendum on climate change. And uh, we have all the, the results from our 17 groups too in, the, in our Cochabamba website. It's the cmpcc.org. My son Miguel is distributing also some CDs with documents. <laughs> He's working with me today. And um, of course, the Cochabamba agreement is also there. After Cochabamba, as all of you may know, President Morales in person, accompanied with uh, civil society representatives from five continents, presented the Cochabamba agreement to Ban Ki-moon, to the Secretary General of the UN. And he went, he traveled to New York to, only to present the document. Bolivia also, as a country, officially uh, presents the submissions with the main points of the Cochabamba Agreement. But unfortunately, and despite all our big efforts, the results of the last meeting in Bonn were very bad. Our proposals from Cochabamba, of course, are not even mentioned. We know that the G77 countries plus China clearly expressed serious concerns and they are not ready to support that text as a basis for the negotiations in Cancun. And I strongly encourage you to continue with this people's movement and I'm sure that together we will help to fight for the rights of our mother earth. So thank you very much. This is our framing question. Um, given, and we work very hard on this, so I hope you like it. <laughs> Given our government, you can't change the question. This is not that democratic. <laughs> <laughs> Given our government's lack of leadership on the climate crisis and failure to respect the rights of impacted communities at home and abroad, and considering the call for climate justice in Cochabamba, what do you think is the connection between climate change and justice in Toronto or in your home community? The question itself is. What do you think is the connection between climate change and justice in Toronto or your home community? And in exploring this question, it would be great to consider the fact that our government has had shown lack of leadership on the climate crisis, has failed to respect the rights of impacted communities at home and abroad, and that Cochabamba is calling for climate justice. Now it's a tricky part. It's up to you guys now to, to, to form your own groups. Now you can do it however you like. Um, you could just decide to find, you know, groups of ten around you, um, but we're, we're not, we're not limiting you. Um, so, uh, break out, find a group, and start. Spaces out there. And too. There, there, there are spaces outside. Um, back in 20 minutes. There are 